The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... of a last year's rose or dig the sunken sunset from the deep. Time has an inexorable way of going on no matter how hard we may try to stop it. And it keeps on unwinding at its own relentless pace no matter how much we may wish it were yesterday or tomorrow. When can I get out of this hospital, doctor? Uh, soon, maybe. It was just a tiny wound. The enemy bullet just grazed the back of my head, just brushed by right here. Soldier, have you any idea how it happened that in the midst of battle you got hit by an enemy bullet in the back of your head? Our mystery drama, A Long Way From Home, is based on a classic short story of Ambrose Bierce, it was especially adapted for the Mystery Theater by Arnold Moss and stars Russell Horton. It is sponsored in part by Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule, and True Value Hardware Stores. I'll be back shortly with Act One. It's a warm spring day in the year 1927 in a little town in central Tennessee about 30 miles from Nashville. Just the week before, the people of the town had screamed themselves hoarse at the news that a daring young man named Lindbergh had been the first man to fly the Atlantic solo. Today they are gathered to celebrate another event, one that took place over 65 years ago on this very soil. As those years slowly unrolled, something had happened to one man whose life had been curiously interwoven with the events taking place today. Our story starts in Ohio, back in the warm autumn days of 1862. Two young men drift lazily in a small rowboat, fishing poles dangling from their hands. Sam, why don't you stop playing that fool mouth organ of yours and do some serious fishing? How can you expect to be catching anything laying there on your back in the front of the boat while you go on playing that dang thing? <laughs> it's beyond my understanding. I'm fishing with my right hand and making music with my left. <laughs> One don't interfere with the other. Music? Now, all you're doing is scaring off what few fish may be swimming in this lake. Or maybe charming them to come up and take a good look at the unusual young fella that's creating all them beautiful sounds. <laughs> I don't see that you charmed too many so far, Sam. Just one little bitty pike you should by right to throw it back. And I don't see that you've done even as well. Well, maybe if you laid off what you call your music, I might. You want some tobacco for your pipe? Mm, wouldn't mind. Yeah, light up your pipe and enjoy it while you can. With this war going on, that's the end of any tobacco we'll be getting from Virginia for a long time. This war has been going on for over a year now. We got to get into it, Sam. You know that. Yeah, I've been thinking the same. We're almost old enough. Anyway, we look old enough. We're healthy enough, and old Abe Lincoln says he needs us. Yeah, he's still putting out his call for volunteers. I've been thinking of the Ohio 41st. Me too. I was thinking of going down to the recruiting place tomorrow morning to enlist. Funny. So was I. Well, we, we could lie a little about our age. Hey, we'll go together. It ain't easy to... Hey, Sam. Wait a minute. Now, hold everything. I, I think I hooked onto the biggest darn fish in the whole state of Ohio. Oh, well, hold on to it. Yeah, what? What in tarnation have I... Have I got at the end of this pole. It's bending almost in half. Well, whatever it is, it, it's going to bust your line. Ooh, and my pole, too. It, it, it don't seem to be jerking around, yeah. does it? Dang, thing just pulls steady like some big old whale. Maybe you're hooked onto some big old log. Now, it ain't funny, Sam. This ain't no log. Oh, wait. He's it, coming. He's coming. Now, you get ready. When I get to the surface, 
Just you catch it with your knife. Uh, I'll hook the blade. I'm ready. Now, once it's in the boat, whack it over the head with... Yeah. Here it comes, Sam. Here it comes. Woo! Look at them air bubbles rising out of the water. You ready? I'm ready. Here we go! No. Good Lord in heaven, no. You, you see what that is, Sam? Yeah, I see. It's the body of a soldier. An infantry man. And he's one of ours. Cut the line, Sam. I'll try. I'll try. Now cut it, Sam. Will you please cut it? I'm doing my best. It, it's just that I feel a little sick. There. Yeah. Yeah. You did it, Sam. See the body sinking to the bottom again. How do you suppose it ever got here? I, I don't know. From his looks, I'd say he'd been dead a long time. His face was all puffed up and bloated like. Yeah. Well, uh, we better get back. More than enough fishing for one day. Uh, uh, pull into your line, Sam, and start rowing. Uh, and tomorrow morning, we go to the recruiting office to volunteer as soldiers. After what we just seen... Yes? Maybe, uh... We ought to give the whole thing a little more thought. We made it. They took us. We are now soldiers of the great army of the United States. Report back here in 24 hours. That's what the man said. Oh, I can't wait to get into one of them fine blue uniforms with that dandy little cap. Oh, then they're going to issue us rifles. Mm -hmm. And take us on a long train ride south. Hey, that's the best part I heard. Best part? The train. It stops at every station on the way to wherever we're going. Uh, well, one of the fellas told me. Why is that the best part? Every time it stops, they feed you. Bread and cold meat, coffee, pickles, cheese. And pretty girls with pink cheeks and shining eyes, they, they smile at you. Sometimes they come right up to you and even kiss you. Ooh, yes siree. We're going to be treated like real heroes. Hey... What's this fella like, the one we'll be serving under, this Colonel Hazen? You hear anything about him? Well, only that he commands the 41st Ohio Volunteers and, and fought the Indians in the West. A young fella. Oh, did real good, they say, at the Battle of Pittsburgh Landing. Reckon we're filling in for some of his troops. The ones that didn't make it back. I reckon so. Say, what's wrong with you? Hmm, nothing. Well, you're acting real glum. Like you wasn't so pleased about being accepted. No, I'm... I'm glad we done what we done. You still got the body of that soldier we fished up yesterday on your mind, ain't you? No, I ain't. Hey, it could happen to anybody. Me, you. But then again, the fella running next to you could drop with a couple of ounces of lead in his belly and nothing ever touch you. Once we actually get into battle... What do you think it'll be like, Sam? Yeah, hard to say. Think you'll be scared? Coming under enemy fire? Uh, hard to say. Maybe. Well, then what? Well, seems like I'd have one of three choices. I either go forward without being touched or... Or I get hit in the fall or... Or... Or what? <sighs> Nah, nah, I don't think I could ever do that. Do what, Sam? Turn around and run. Run in the wrong direction. Nah, no, nah, I just couldn't do that. How do you know you couldn't, Sam? How can you be sure? A couple of months went by, and suddenly, before we noted, it was winter. The trees was as bare as skeletons, and the cold bit into us like the jaws of a steel hunting trap. We were somewhere in Tennessee with the first light of dawn. The fog began to lift, and we could see the whole army of the Cumberland. Our army in front of us stretched out for what seemed like miles. Rumors of the coming battle had been spreading through the camp. Sam... Don't you ever stop playing that dang mouth organ. Gets me all upset. 
And it really does. Besides, besides you're going to wake up the whole company. Oh, just a little music in the spirit of Christmas. Are you plum crazy, Sam? Christmas was over almost a week ago. <laughs> What's the difference? It's a good tune any day of the year. Even today, the last day of 1862. December 31st. Say, do you, uh... you sleep any last night? Not much. You? Me neither. Too excited, I reckon, about what could happen today. You know something, Sam? Laying down there in the grass, the night was so still, I... I could hear my heart a beating. And every blade of grass pressing against my cheek was a telling me how sorry they all was for me. For all of us. Now, you got to stop thinking that way. You just got to. It's not good for you. Well, I couldn't tell anyone else, Sam, but... Well, I can tell you. I am scared. Real scared. Well, now, I'll tell you something. What's that? So am I. Scared right down to my bones. <laughs> That's why I keep on playing this here mouth organ. To keep up my spirits. And I'll tell you something else. What's that? So long as we stick together, the two of us, keeping an eye on each other, protecting each other, well, then I ain't half as scared as I might be. Yeah. I know, I know what you mean, Sam. Today could be the biggest fighting of the whole dang war. But we're going to watch out, each for the other, no matter what happens. Ain't we? No matter what happens. The words was hardly out of our mouths when all hell broke loose. Confederate troops had retreated to this area some 30 miles south of Nashville. Our boys, with a much bigger force, had been tailing them for days. Each was planning an attack, we was told, on the other's left flank, and the enemy struck first. Our brigade, Hayes' brigade, was right smack in the line of their biggest guns. Keep your head down. The minute they fire, let's up a bit. We'll make for cover on that big rock over there. we got to get to the top of the hill ahead of us. It's a close one. Stop. Any minute now, we're going to make a run for that rock. And we stay together. The rebel guns was shooting fast and furious as foot by foot. We dragged ourselves across the bodies of our own dead. Firing as we went. We, we could hardly see where we was going, what we was shooting at. The, the smoke was that thick. All of a sudden, Sam sprang to his feet and started to run forward. Here they come. Right at us. We'll stop them. Now, let's go. No! Sam! Sam, what's the matter? Up in here. Up in here. Get bad. You just keep going. Straight ahead. I, I can't help you, Sam. There's nothing I can do to help. I know that. I know that. What's the matter with you? Where are you going? I'm... I'm going, going this way. But the enemy's over there, ahead of us. You're running the wrong way. The wrong way. As his fatally wounded companion sinks helplessly to the ground, the young man ignores him runs in a blistering sweat faster and faster back to his own lines. His eyeballs crack like two hot stones. His lungs choke with the suffocating smoke of battle. How far can he go? Can anything slow down this panic of self-preservation? I'll be back shortly with Act Two. Have you ever stopped to think of the meaning of the word courage? Is it, for example... The extraordinary act of boldly pushing forward into the face of almost certain death. And does cowardice, what might be called the lack of courage, mean a weak-hearted refusal to accept that challenge? There are some who think it takes a certain kind of courage just to be what others would call a coward. To act in a manner different from what's expected. As I ran from the enemy lines, the rest of our men were running toward us. 
A good many were dropping to the ground like so many sacks of flour. Some still moving and twisting in funny positions like they were jumped out of the sky. It was all I could do not to step on them. The more I ran, the more the shells kept whirling around me, exploding all over the place. Every little lead ball was searching for me, a ball of death with my name on it. And, and I thought of Sam laying out there, bleeding his life away. And I, I got mad at myself. Not because I was running away, but because I'd done nothing to help Sam. I begun to laugh. Why? I, I don't know. Sip. Maybe I was glad it was Sam's inside spilling over the Tennessee soil and not mine. I noticed I had no rifle. My cap was gone, too. There seemed to be a lull in the fight. Hmm? <laughs> Something hit me on the back of the head. I put my hand up and saw some blood. Then, everything about me suddenly went pitch black. I passed out. Passed out. Cold. Uh, hold still, young fella. Uh, unless you want to lose an ear. Yeah. There we are. Uh, who are you? Well, what's going on here? The wound's beginning to close. The opening is healing very nicely. Well, where am I? Who, who are you? Major Armistead, surgeon, U.S. Army. In charge of this section. What section? Uh, this base hospital. Army? Hospital? Uh, you're a very lucky young man. If that bullet had hit half an inch to the left or to the right, you wouldn't be here. What bullet, Major? The one that you got in the head during the fighting. But, uh, we're taking good care of you. You're going to be all right. It was just a little wound, wasn't it, Major? I, I didn't feel no pain, just a little buzzing noise. Now, you, you get some rest, son. But I, I, I got to get back as soon as I can. Of course, of course, I understand. I got to get back to my company. Mostly, I got to see what happened to Sam. Sam. My best friend, he got hit. Real bad, I think. Well, you just lay back and take it easy. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Uh, for the record. Y yes, sir, Major. What company are you attached to? Uh, company? I, I, um, company. Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, mm-hmm. What's your name, son? My, my name? My, my name is... Your, your name? Mm. What do your friends call you? What does Sam call you? I... I I can't remember. We try. Try real hard. I... I can't remember. I see. Well, when can I get out of this here hospital, Major? Soon. Maybe. How soon? Can't quite say. Well, not yet. A bullet just grazed the back of my head. Just brushed by right, right here. Keep your hand away from your head and don't put your fingers on that bandage. <sighs> One last question, soldier. And try to remember. Yes, sir? Have you any idea how it happened you got hit by an enemy bullet in the back of your head? The next I remember, I was standing on a low hill overlooking a wide stretch of forest and field. I had no idea how much time had gone by. It was a warm summer night. By the full moon hanging low in the west, I noted it was near the hour of dawn. A light mist lay along the earth. Nowhere could I see any sign of life, except for two or three little cabins in the distance the sound of dogs barking far off somewhere. I felt strange and a little lonely. Suddenly, a light blinked on in one of the cabins. I made my way toward it and knocked on the door. Uh, open the door, please. I, I mean no harm. Who are you? Where you are? Uh, uh, just some information. Pl please open the door. 
I can help you in trouble. Quiet. Well, what can I do for you? Uh, just a couple of questions. Questions? At this time of the morning, what's the matter with you, mister? Well, uh, excuse me if I woke you up. You ain't said what you wanted. Now, make it quick, and better not try no funny business, else my two dogs will rip you to pieces. Well, you see, I'm a soldier. Soldier? Yeah, serving under Colonel Hazen in the Federal Army, the Army of the United States. Well, you sure don't look like no soldier to me. Where's your uniform? Well, uh, that's just it. In, in the middle of all that fighting, it got ripped up, muddied up, and uh, they took it from me. They, they uh, took it. Who are you talking about? Who is they? Well, those people up at the hospital. Oh, that's where you're from. What do you want to know? What's been happening? Happening? Like what? Well, where are the armies? Which side won? Which armies are you talking about? Ours and theirs. I, I got to know which side won. Besides, if, if they catch me out of uniform, they could hang me, thinking I was a spy. But, but when they see this bandage on my head... What bandage? Then they'll know I ain't a spy. They'll know I've been discharged from uh, up there. Now, you look ahead. You woke me up. I got work to do. I can't stand here all morning talking to the likes of you. Well, then c can I talk to your master? My master? The man who owns this farm, this uh, plantation, whatever it is. But I ain't got no master. Oh, you one of the lucky ones? You already been freed? Look, I I'm going to have to shut this door, mister. If only I could find my regiment. If I, if I only knew where I was. Sorry, mister, I can't help you. But I will tell you one thing. What was that? The hospital's up that way. You better turn around and get back up there by yourself. Or before you know it, they're going to come after you and put you there. There was no sense asking any more questions of an ignorant old woman anybody could see wasn't quite right in the head. I got back on the road and started walking again. A faint gray light was coming up on the horizon. Then, like he come from nowhere... Good morning, sir. Huh? Oh, uh, good morning. I salute you, sir. Oh, well, why do you do that? Oh, excuse me, uh, sitting up there on your horse, I, I thought you were a cavalry officer. Cavalry officer? <coughs> no, I, I, I'm still in Molson, Dr. Still in Molson. I'm a physician. Been up all night with a very sick patient way back in the hills. That's why I took the horse. <laughs> Haven't I seen you someplace before? Well, I don't reckon so. I'm a soldier, Ohio 41st, Colonel Hazen's Brigade, Army of the United States. Oh, that's why I saluted you. I took you for one of our officers. I see. Uh, would you happen to know which side won, ours or theirs? Or would you mind if I asked you a question? Oh, no, sir, not at all. Why do you keep putting your hand up to the back of your head? Oh, uh, I was wounded in the battle. Nothing very serious, just a glance and blow from a bullet. No blood, no pain. I, uh -huh. I, I got separated from my friend, Sam. <gasps> Quick, doctor, get behind this clump of cedar trees. Quick. What's wrong? That, that, don't stop to ask questions and, and don't talk. They won't see us from behind these trees. What are you staring at? My, oh, my. Just look at them. Why, there must be hundreds and hundreds of them. How far off would you say they are? Fifty yards from where we're standing? A hundred? Just look at them horsemen coming along, riding in formation toward the north. And behind them, all them foot soldiers marching slowly in column, their rifles aslant on their shoulders, gleaming in the morning sun. And look there, following them. The cannoneers, sitting stiffly with folded arms, sitting straight up on the seats of the two wheeled caissons that are pulling the cannon. And do you notice something very peculiar? We don't hear a thing. There isn't the slightest sound of a voice, of a horse's hoof, of a wagon's wheel, nothing. There they are, all moving. In absolute dead silence. Why is that? Talk to me, Doctor. Say something. Well, what do you want me to say? Oh, thank the Lord I hear you. I 
hear you and I hear my own voice for for a minute there. I thought I'd gone deep. Y- you know, Doctor, if them men are what I take them to be, we've lost the battle and that's the Confederate Army moving north on to Nashville. To Nashville? Only I can't figure out why they don't make any noise. The whole dang army, men, horses, artillery moving along and not a single sound. Well, you know, some people think there could be an explanation for that. Well, there could? Uh-huh. Something called acoustic shadows. Ooh, what's that? Well, now, if we were both standing on one side of that big oak tree over there and I was talking to you... Uh-huh. And as I kept on talking, I circled the tree. There would be a moment or two when I would be on the opposite side of that tree where you wouldn't hear me. At least not hear me as well. The tree would be causing what they call an acoustic shadow, like a blind spot for the ear. It may be you don't hear the sound of those troops because we're standing in a path of just such a shadow. You don't hear me either, do you? No, I do not. Look, they're just about passing out of sight. Yeah, that's the end of them. I think it's all right now to come out from behind these trees, don't you? Yeah, I better get out of here real fast. They might discover me, take me prisoner. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that. Oh, why not? There, there, there could be others. No, just put it out of your mind. May I ask if you'll allow me a personal question? Just how old do you think you are? Well, 19, going on 20. Why? What's that got to do with anything? Well, I just thought I'd ask. I shouldn't have guessed that that was your age. Well, let me take you back to the hospital. They'll be getting worried about you. Not till I know more about them troops we've seen moving to the north. Now, uh, what was the color of the uniforms? I couldn't make it out. Did you notice? Here, let me help you onto my horse, and I'll walk along beside you. Now, look. Uh-huh. Was they wearing blue, or was they wearing gray? Tell me. you got to tell me. Now, first, you got to take your hands off of me. Yeah, that's better. Was they wearing blue or gray? You're going to have to face the truth. They were wearing neither blue nor gray. Well, what are you saying? Nor any other color. There were no troops. Not one single solitary soldier. In the devastation that follows in the paths of war, one cannot begin to evaluate the extent of the destruction. Young lives are snuffed out in an instant. Families are destroyed. And often minds, too delicate, perhaps too unready, to withstand the shocks of war collapse and are shattered as completely as any body can be broken, which may well be the case with our young friend. I shall return shortly with Act Three. In the year 1862, a young man and his friend enlist as volunteers on the side of the North in our country's most devastating civil war. In their first exposure to battle, the friend is fatally wounded. The young man runs away from the battlefield, receives a head wound for which he is treated at an army hospital. Some time later, he finds himself wandering about the Tennessee countryside, trying to discover the whereabouts of his regiment. He meets a physician from whom he is trying to get this information. Let me take you back to the hospital. It's less than a mile from here. Well, why should I go back to the hospital? The head wound I got is all fixed. You were not discharged from the hospital, were you? Well, not exactly. You left on your own, didn't you? Sneaked out in the middle of the night? Am I right? Well, there weren't no sense in my staying there any longer. Anyone on the staff see you go? Not a soul. You walked out of the hospital before, haven't you? You won't tell nobody? Oh, trust me. I'm only trying to help. Well, once before... I walked out once before, and and if they send me back, I'll do it again. Yeah, but why? I'm sure they treat you very well up there. Because I got to rejoin my regiment. Can't you get that through your head? I've done something bad, and I got to get back. Most of all, I... I got to find Sam. Let me take you back to the hospital. Yep. Yeah. You get up on my horse. I, 
Get your hands off me. Now, don't you dare touch me. Now, come with me. We'll <laughs> take good care of you. I got a good idea how you'll be taking care of me. You just better take care of yourself. Please. I don't even believe you're a doctor. No, I ain't going back to no hospital. And you, sir, for all I care, you can go straight to hell. I left him standing there, and I went on anxiously down the road. It was still early, but I began to feel the rising heat of the coming day. Kept looking about me on all sides for some sign of my company, any sign of Colonel Hazen's brigade. In some curious way, the surroundings seemed familiar. But there was a funny kind of fuzziness over everything. Something else was odd. On every side of me was fields planted real neat and careful. Not a single sign of the battle, not the slightest mark of war. Coming up right behind me was a little buggy with a bright red fringe around the top of it, drawn by a chestnut mare stepping along real proud. Oh, a very pretty young lady, 19, 20. She was at the reins. Morning. Which way you headed? Can I give you a lift? I, uh, oh, I was going that way. Oh, toward town. I guess just about everybody's going to town today. Jump up here beside me. I'll give you, I'll give you a ride. Oh, I appreciate your kindness, ma'am. Here, let, let, let me give you a hand. No, I don't need no help, ma'am. Thank you just the same. Where are you from? Ohio. Ohio? You're a long way from home, aren't you? Yeah, reckon so. That's a real pretty dress you're wearing, miss. And a very becoming bonnet. Oh, you like them? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you don't think I'm being forward for saying so. Oh, not at all. I'm very pleased. My grandmother would be just as pleased to hear you say so. Your grandmother? Mm-hmm. You don't say. Uh, this is her dress. Been in the attic for years. She let me wear it only because today is so special. Same with the buggy. Been in the family forever. Uh, my name's Mary Jo Campbell. Pleased to meet you. Uh, what's yours? Um, may I ask you something, Miss Campbell? Why, uh, certainly. Uh, have you seen any of our troops around? Troops? Oh, you mean for the celebration? No, I mean soldiers. Union soldiers, Federal Army. Union soldiers? Well, you can tell me if you have. I'm, I'm doing my best to find them so I can rejoin them. Oh, you're, uh, you're from back there, aren't you? Back where? The hospital? Oh, I was for a short time. A little scratch of a wound back of my head, but they fixed it. Fixed it real good. Oh, they did? Well, here. I, I rubbed my hand over the back of my head re- real hard like this. Yeah. You see any blood on the palm of my hand? No, not there. Like I told you, it was nothing. What's that? What? What? Sounds like a troop of cavalry passing by. And that's the infantry. And the gun carriers of the artillery. And they are going north, headed for Nashville. That's the same army I saw back there. The silent ones, the ones I couldn't hear, only... For me. Now I hear them, but I can't see them. Where, Where are they? You see them, miss? No. I do not. You did hear him, same as I did. Well, yes. Yes, of, of course I heard him. Oh, I'd give anything to know for sure whether they were our boys or theirs. <gasps> hear that? Well, I'm not sure. Listen. You know who that is playing? Sam? Sam, is that you? Where are you, Sam? Fishing with my right hand, <gasps> making music with my left. Where are you, Sam? Toss me some of that Virginia tobacco, will ya? I just hooked you into the biggest darn fish in the whole state of Ohio. Hold on to it. Doing the best I know how. But you didn't. You didn't. I didn't. I didn't what? You didn't do the best you knowed how. We promised we'd stick by each other. And you ran away. I didn't mean to, Sam. I, I, I didn't mean to. But you did. You left me there. And dozens of others. 
on the battlefield to die. You saved your own skin by running away. I was scared, Sam. Scared to death. We was all scared. I'm sorry, Sam. Real sorry. You, you, you got to believe me. Sorry? Sorry? I can't hear what you're saying. I'm, I'm telling you, Sam. I'm telling you, I'm sorry. I am sorry. Oh, Missy, everything's going to be all right. Oh, oh that's, that's you, Miss. I'm still right beside you. Oh, I reckon I must have been shouting. I, I thought I was seeing an old friend of mine. Maybe it was only in my head. I, I hope you'll excuse me. Oh, of course. I, I never do like passing through this part of the road, even in broad daylight. Oh, well, why is that? Well, I always get the creep. A funny kind of cold chill every time I go by that old military cemetery. Oh, over there on the right. Cemetery? Hmm? Oh, sure. Sure. Getting kind of warm, isn't it? Well, that's to be expected. Tennessee, this time of the year. In December? January? <laughs> it's May. The end of May. May? Yes. January, February, March, April. That, was, that, that would mean I, I was up in that hospital for five months. Five months? Well, what's that, miss? That, that, that's not in my head, is it? No, that's the Army Band. All the way down from Washington, D.C. Just for today's celebration. What are they celebrating? Oh, you'll see. You'll see when we get there. You got... appropriate that today, of all days, we pause to pay tribute to the valiant men who gave their lives in the courageous defense of their country. Who is that man up there on the platform talking? Shh, shh. That's the United States Senator. We can all be pleased. I know I am. That you good citizens have had the imagination to come here in the dress, in the costumes, with the horses and buggies of so many of our grandmothers and grandfathers. It adds the color of a joyous celebration to the solemnity of the day. What's he talking about? Costumes. Listen. But this is, after all, a day of dedication, a commemoration of the more than 20,000 soldiers of both sides, north and south, who gave the ultimate sacrifice, who spilled their life's blood here on these very sacred grounds. And so... In solemn memory of the gallant men who served on those three bloody days, December 31st, 1862, to January 2nd, 1863. I was there. I was one of them soldiers. He's not going to be must be quiet. By order of the Congress of the United States, I hereby dedicate these 345 acres as a national battlefield and a national cemetery. made my way through the crowd of people best I could, trying to get to the platform to tell that senator who I was. In my hurry to get there, I tripped and stumbled into a big pool of clear water left over from last night's rain. As I tried to get to my feet, I caught a glimpse of my face in the water. And what I saw filled me with horror. I was looking at the face of a very old man. The skin was like old brown wrapping paper. The hair was white, snow white. I raised a trembling hand to the back of my head, looked at the palm. No blood. How strange, I thought, that a little bullet that just grazed the skin and a couple of days in the hospital could do this awful thing to me. Or could it be that I was in that hospital longer than I figured? Longer. Much, much longer. I 
feel so sorry for him, Doctor. Well, all the other Civil War veterans are gone. So far as we know, he was the last of them. Mm. Do they have any idea at the hospital how old he was? Well, this is 1927. The battle was on New Year's Day, 1863. That's over 64 years ago. If he was, say, 20 at the time of the battle, that would have made him about 84, 85. Do the hospital records show the nature of his battle wound? Well, we dug up the old records from the first hospital. Mm -hmm. He was admitted New Year's Day, 1863. A bullet had gone into a delicate part of his brain, too dangerous to remove. And so he lived all those years, 65 of them, all at the hospital, with a Confederate bullet sitting right there in his brain. By the way, Doctor, who was he? What was his name? We'll never know. No record of any name. Whoever he was, he either couldn't or wouldn't tell. My name is Might Have Been. I'm also called No More, Too Late, Farewell. The body of the old man was placed among his comrades in arms, and he became another of the nameless dead that already rested under the sod and the dew, waiting for the judgment day. Love and tears for the blue, tears and love for the gray. I'll return in a moment. Today in a little Tennessee town, the Stones River National Battlefield and Cemetery stands as a proud memorial to the more than 20,000 soldiers of both North and South who fell there on December 31st, 1862. The valiant soldiers of William B. Hazen's brigade are especially honored by a monument that was erected there in 1863 by the survivors of that brigade and sleeping there peacefully among the over 2,500 unidentified dead may well be someone like the old man of the story you've been listening to. Who knows? Our cast included Russell Horton, Lloyd Batista, Evie Juster, and Arnold Moss. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time... Pleasant dreams.